Hello and welcome to the EJ Tech Show where we bring you all the latest gadget reviews and all the interesting developments from the world of technology. I'm Sahil and this handsome chap sitting right next to me is Soham. And for our very first episode, by the way, this is our first episode, Flagship. which we're super excited about. I mean, how exciting is this for you? Well, this is the pilot and we've been speaking of doing this for quite a long time a long, now. Long, long time, yeah. So it's good that we're finally got, getting around to it. That's great. Now, we are reviewing the OnePlus 8 Pro and usually I reserve my, you know, my entire judgment towards the end of the review, but I'm just going to come out and say it. Predictably fantastic. Okay. Well, I, I rem remember you said the same thing about the OnePlus 7 Pro as well. You said it was going to be a positive review, so I expect nothing less than that either. Absolutely. So, OnePlus 8 Pro. Now, interesting fact here. For some time now, there's two things that have been preventing the OnePlus devices from becoming an outright flagship. The first thing is the lack of IP68, dust and water resistance. And the second thing is wireless charging. Wireless charging. Now, with the OnePlus 8 Pro, that's not the case anymore. You've got both those things here, which has basically completed the transformation of OnePlus from a flagship killer to an outright flagship. True. You're still getting a very familiar experience with this phone, right? Uh, you're still getting Oxygen OS, which is one of my favorite operating systems Easily. on a smartphone. Easily. It's very highly intuitive and uh, it just works so well. It's clean, most importantly, no bloatware. So that's a big plus for me. Apart from that, on the back, you've still got the OnePlus logo. It's a slightly rebranded logo, but still it's on the back. Uh, you've also got the vertical camera stack that we saw on, on the, the 7, 7 Pro. Pro as well, yeah. But now, and this deserves a big shout out, this glacial green color. I thought the one, uh, the iPhone uh, 11 Pro, the olive, olive green, green color was probably my favorite, but now this has taken the cake. It's so soothing to the eye as well. And of course, matte finish. I mean, just feel this and tell me that you're not holding an ultra luxurious product in your hand. Honestly, I, I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, in the olive green color. It has the same matte finish, but there's something about OnePlus that they just do that's a little bit extra. They've, they've somehow managed to get their build quality up to the level of, let's say, Apple and Samsung, and in some cases, make it even better. So apart from that, apart from the nice build and everything, I'm going to do a little bit of nitpicking now because this isn't exactly a cheap phone and I will be getting into the pricing very soon. But first thing, the camera stack. The bump, it is massive. For It's the biggest I've seen on a OnePlus phone. So if you lay it on a table and if you rock it, it's gonna rock. It's gonna rock like a crazy boat. So using it on a flat surface is out of the question. Although it doesn't rock as much where you're typing, yeah. but sometimes if you go a little bit, if you start scrolling on the upper part, it'll just start rocking like crazy. Uh, apart from that, no headphone jack, which is okay because- it's Expected. It's expected, I think the only two flagships that I can recall right now that have come with a headphone jack this year. Uh, one Motorola Edge Plus and the other one was the iQ3. Yes, so, iQ3, yes. Apart from that, everyone has skipped out on this, okay? Other thing, it is a very, very big phone. So you're not gonna be able to use it single-handedly for most of the time. But luckily, because you can, at least if you wanna drop down notification, you can basically scroll down anywhere on the sides. So that makes it a little bit easier, but it's, it's not one-handed yeah. usage. Yeah, it's not one-handed yeah. usage. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Fair enough. Now, uh, coming over to that 120 hertz display. So, what that means is, I don't need to tell you, but everything refreshes 120 times each second, so everything is smoother, everything is more fluid, uh, text is sharper. More importantly though, OnePlus 8 Pro now lets you play one of the most popular Battle Royale games. You know what I'm gonna say, yep. right? How long have you been talking about this, right? Games exactly. that we don't get. I'm talking about uh, Fortnite, of course, right? Yeah. So how long have you been talking about this? Like, you know, we've got all these, the games that matter, they don't have it. Like yeah. Call of Duty Mobile doesn't have it, PUBG, PUBG doesn't Mobile. have it. Yep. But now this game does have it. And with 90 Hertz, yeah, it, it, makes, it makes a big it difference. It does make a difference, especially if you're someone who takes gaming very seriously, especially in a mobile phone, which a lot of people now are with the eSports scene building up people are actually considering these devices as pro-level equipment. So to pack in something like that, a 120 hertz refresh rate, it's almost a necessity at this point. Yeah. Uh, another thing, uh, you've got a punch hole this time around, uh, not like the one person. Not the pop-up camera. Not the pop-up camera, which I'm okay with because I don't like moving parts. Moving parts just freak me out, okay? Because <laughs> all sorts of issues. True. Uh, I, and yes. that was one of the main reasons yes, they were I mean, limiting the punch, IP. Punch hole, punch hole, yeah, it, it, you can't get the IP68 rating there. Yeah. And uh, punch hole, uh, yes, it gives you less uh, screen real estate, but honestly, I'm okay with this. It's not that oppressive. It's there, and a lot of other phones have the punch hole display, and it works for me. A quick side note, do you like it on the left or do you like it on the right? 
I prefer it. I definitely don't like it on the middle. <laughs> okay, sorry, Samson, but I don't like it in the middle. Uh, I prefer it on the left. Yeah, for me, it works on the left. True, that makes sense because every time you put your phone in landscape, you're most yeah. likely going to tilt left, and it's in the most least obtrusive corner, I should say, and that's the best scene. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about another big feature over here, which happens to be the camera. So you've got a quad camera set up on the back. There's a 48 megapixel primary sensor. There's a 48 megapixel ultra wide sensor. There's an eight megapixel telephoto lens. And you also get something known as a color filter camera, which apparently has been disabled because I couldn't find it. Uh, and the reason it was disabled was because it could see stuff in, apparently it could see stuff in x-ray vision. Yeah, that whole creepy uh, control. But anything that can see x-ray vision, I mean, you'd think that would, would just sell like hotcakes because the possibilities with that is endless. True, but then the, the room for abuse is also endless. Yeah, exactly. That, I think, so, was the main problem for yeah, people. So they have disabled it and they've done a good job of that. Uh, for me, here's the thing about OnePlus. The story, you know the story about OnePlus and cameras, right? Basically, it's always good but it's not the best, not compared to the other flagship, not compared to the Apples and the Samsung. It's, it's sort of been their Achilles heel. They get yeah. everything right, they get yeah. the OS right, they get the build quality right, yeah. they get the updates right, and the screen right, and then they just falter on the camera. But this time, I think they've just done it. Okay, This is, for me, a flagship level camera on a flagship smartphone. It works really, I mean, it's a very versatile setup. Everything that I wanted from this, and more it gave me. And if you're going to buy this phone just for the camera and nothing else, let's say you do that, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be very, very happy with this. Even at its price point? Even at this price point. Those are big words. Yeah. So basically for me, the primary camera works really well. Uh, daytime pictures, beautiful. Good lighting conditions always takes great pictures. Uh, ultra wide, it just gives you so much more in that frame. Yeah, it has something like what 120 degree field of view, yeah. which, is, which yeah. is considerably big considering the ultra wide cameras that people are now packing in, the smartphone manufacturers put like 13 megapixel ones, low resolution 8 megapixel ones, which don't even have that much field of view, but they just call it ultra wide so that they can market it that way. Ultra wide pictures do have a slight distortion in there, not, not a lot, but this is fairly common in most of these cameras with ultra wide cameras. Uh, then, of course, the ultra wide camera can also take macro, because it's 48 megapixel, it can take oh. macro pictures as well. And it takes really good macro pictures. So I'm very happy with that as well. Uh, night photography, another strong point over here. Uh, I actually took shots with the night and without the, the nightscape, that's what they call it over here. So with without, I couldn't tell that much of a difference because even without the night mode, it would the AI would beautifully boost colors up. So you're not going to get a lot of noise, uh, you're not going to get a lot of distortion, you're not going to get a lot of fake artifacts that you know come into pictures. So it's going to be really crisp and with a lot of high detail. So I was very happy with that as well. So video, uh, shoots up to 4K, it's fine, uh, pretty crisp. Uh, you, it's also got a very solid uh, optical stabilization, so you won't be having any issues with bumps and it'll be pretty smooth throughout. I yeah. uh, forgot to talk about the uh, 8 megapixel telephoto uh, camera. Uh, it's fine, it uh, shoots up to 3 times x uh, hybrid zoom and then it gives you 30x digital zoom. Uh, 3 times is fine, detail level is there, it's not too bad. Uh, 30x it's, is it usable? No, no, it's not. It's not even Instagram usable. It's just don't don't bother. But problem with pretty much every phone, even True. if you look at the Galaxy uh, S20 Ultra, it can't. It just yeah, we saw those problems ever since the Oppo Reno yeah. 30x zoom came around. So everything will become much more softer. The more you zoom in, it'll just start to lose True. its quality and lose its detail. Uh, apart from the camera uh, performance, Snapdragon 865. Uh, on this version that I have, 8 GB of RAM, 128 GB of storage. Uh, not bad for starting. Uh, but there is a higher end uh, variant where you can get up to 12 GB, 256 GB, but that's going to cost you a little bit more. Uh, but even with those specs, no problem. And of course, with Oxygen OS, everything is just more fluid, much more friendlier, much more, it's just user friendly. Even for gaming, their, their fanatic mode, OnePlus has always has this legacy of um, really focusing on gaming performance, whatever chipset they use, and they actually collaborate with an actual esports gaming team. So to put those things in at a phone that's costing you less than a Samsung flagship, I think that's really impressive. Yeah, so gaming, top notch, uh, no drop frame rates, no lags uh, whatsoever. Also normal day-to-day -day stuff, multitasking, uh, opening apps, switching apps. This has the 865, right? Yeah, this has the 865. A Snapdragon top, of the top, 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 of, of top of the line. So performance-wise, you're gonna have no issues uh, whatsoever. And no complaints from me, at least. Okay, let's come to the battery. And this is really interesting over here because it doesn't have the highest capacity like as compared to the what S20 we've seen on the S20 Ultra or the Motorola Edge Plus. Those have those 5000 mAh behemoths. But on this, it's slightly less. But 
with, let's say, the QHD plus resolution turned on, with the 120 hertz uh, turned on, I still managed to get about seven hours of screen time. That's right? really good. So that's that's good. Not breaking records, but it's very respectable. And here's there's another debate about this. Do you need such large batteries when you have something like the Warp uh, 30 charger on this thing, right? Because that tops up the phone so quickly. So even if it does die down quickly, you can just quickly top it up and in 10 minutes, you'll get a massive boost. Now, apart from Oxygen OS, this is also an Android 10 device. So you've got all the good stuff over here, dark mode, privacy controls, uh, just navigations. So that's all there. And of course, it's a OnePlus phone. So I think you're covered for what? Three years? Minimum. Minimum, right? So big, big advantage over there. Uh, finally, I want to talk about the pricing. So this one is priced at 55,000 rupees in India. But here's the thing. Like I said, this is no longer a flagship killer. Okay, you need you need pricing to reflect that, and this doesn't do that anymore. So this is an outright flagship. Why is it slightly more expensive? Uh, well, firstly, obviously, IP68 rating. Uh, secondly, you've got that wireless charging. And also, the camera. This is now a flagship level camera. Those lenses are more expensive to manufacture, more expensive to make, and that price is reflected then upon us. So we have to pay. <laughs> True, because OnePlus hasn't compromised on any area, even the display, even things like they, they didn't need to put in a 120 hertz display, they didn't need to put in a QHD plus resolution, but they still did along with all the other features as well. That's right, that's right. So, and what you just said about compromise, a lot of companies claim that when they make a flagship phone that this is a no compromise flagship. And let's face it, there are a few compromises. They make everyone Always. Nice but I think this one is pretty much a no compromise smartphone well the brand's policy is never settle so that's what you're gonna get so to sum up is this my favorite android smartphone well the note 20 still has to come out so we'll wait for that but right now it's by far the best phone i've used this year okay this is next level and yes it's expensive but i think it's absolutely worth it okay so that was the oneplus 8 pro review but that's not the only gadget that we are doing on this show. I mean, did you think that we were only going to do one gadget and just move on? No. Come on, that's we'll, we'll get that laziness will set in by the third episode or so. Uh, but for now, we're mm, very much into it, right? So now we've got audio. This little right? baby. So this is the Sony XF XB. Sorry, WF XB 700. Yeah, Sony needs to come up with a better naming system. This is honestly it's it, getting ridiculous. It's a C three PO R two D two XB 700. It's a little bit wild. It's a little bit Star Wars ish out there, but name apart, I think this is possibly one of the best true wireless contenders in the Indian market I've seen in recent times. Um, honestly, this is what happens when you get an actual audio brand to do something that's usually just a market trend. Um, whether you get an affordable price tag from let's say the Realme's or the Xiaomi's, um, you're gonna get good audio quality from these. They come in this really nice plastic case. Now it is plastic while well, I say plastic and nice, sounds sort of like an oxymoron, but it's hard plastic. It's got a matte finish, really nice translucent lid. So when you actually shut these, they show the charging light on the two earbuds okay. inside, which is pretty yeah. nifty when you plug it in the charge, you know they're working, you know there's nothing going wrong with them. So that's good. Now, the charging case itself is quite lightweight, despite the fact that both the charging case and the earpods put together, they offer around 18 hours of battery life. Now that's really okay. good. That's pretty good. That's actually more than the Galaxy Buds Plus, which I think offer about 11 to 12 hours. So that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Exactly, because you get nine hours from the earbuds themselves, and then you get an additional nine hours if you have the char uh, charging carrying case, sorry, with you. It's USB Type-C chargeable, which is good. There's a small little USB Type-C cable that they include, and they include a bunch of ear tips for the earbuds themselves. So if you want to get a exactly. better comfortable fit, Find so fit. you can get those. Now let's get to the next part of the design, which is the IPX4 rating. Okay. That means it's water resistant to a certain extent and sweat resistant, but no dust resistance, which I think is a miss for the Indian market. Uh, obviously, this is part of the extra base series. Yeah, which the you've XB, seen, yeah, which you've seen base, on yeah. the headphone. Now they've decided, you know what, it's a good time to introduce it over here as well. So that's exactly what Sony's done. Uh, problem with anything that has a lot of base technology in it is that it can slightly muddle the vocals and the instruments and basically the mids take a hit. Did you feel that with this or? Now, I do agree with that hypothesis that that's what usually happens on at least affordable um, sound products like these. 
that when you get punchy bass, when you get a really nice lows, then you sort of miss out on um, clarity. But that's something I did not feel even once with this. Now, I gave it a proper usage. I used it in a bunch of different environments. But no matter what the situation, the audio clarity was there. Yes, the bass was extra punchy, but personally, I like that. I listen to a lot of music where the bass is heavy and where bass is favored over other tones, but I like it, I enjoyed it. So for true blue audiophiles, there's not a lot of uh, tonality they can change. There's no e equalizer in which they can tweak it to make yeah. it just hit that sweet spot. But for the for the casual listener, it's, it's great for the casual listener. This is a no brainer for them. Okay. So that's fine. Now, did you try this both with an iPhone and uh, Android phone or? Yes, yeah, so I tried it with a different variety of products. I tried it with a laptop, I tried it with my iPhone, I tried it with my iPad and with an Android phone. I used the OnePlus. So um, across the board, whether I was using Spotify, YouTube, Netflix, Apple Music, overall sound quality was very, very good. The places where I did want to switch it up a bit, I was able to do that with the in-app equalizer settings because let's face it, you're always going to be using uh, an app for music that already has some sort of built-in um, equalizer settings. Now, Apple Music doesn't have as much as Spotify, but there's still some for some basic tweaking, so that's fine. But a very good thing is the passive noise cancellation. There's no active noise cancellation. So it basically passively blocks. It's exactly kind of like noise isolation more than noise cancellation. True. So yeah, I, at this price point, I don't think you would have got noise cancellation even the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus don't offer that. Uh, but like you're saying, it does do a good job of isolating that sound. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't think most people will have an issue with that. It will let you enjoy your music, but not with too many distractions. You know, unless there's some construction work going on, or if there's a jumbo jet honestly, flying over. Honestly, you. I don't at this think time, I don't think any jets are flying over <laughs> anyway. So you're good. You're good to go in that sense. Okay, so another very important thing when it comes to uh, truly wireless earbuds is battery life. Now, Sony claims with this one, you're getting a total of 18 hours. So that's nine hours on the buds and nine hours uh, with the charging case. Uh, is that about right? Is that what you experienced with these? Honestly, my experience was a little bit better than that. I seem uh, to think that if I had really used these for nine hours straight, I would have gotten possibly better life, to, uh, battery life than that. Um, I got around five hours of consecutive usage. The battery went legitimately from 100% only to 75, which I think is really, really impressive. So that means they do hold their battery very well. And the charging case that you put them in is going to constantly keep topping it up every time you put it back in. 10 minutes, quick charge, 60 minutes battery. That's, okay. that's absolutely fantastic at this price point from a true wireless content. Okay, I just want to quickly go back to the day because I just, like, we've talked about the design, but just, just check, just check these out. This is the most weirdest shape I have ever seen on an. I don't know how to describe. What is this? What sh is it? Is it some more alien oval, versus predator oval? kind of is stuff? It, is it round? <laughs> but speaking of design, speaking about how they've made it, now they made it this large. Uh, usually, when you see even the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, they've got a smaller profile. This has a really large outer area. And they could have easily packed on some touch controls yeah, here. Definitely, yeah. Even if it's just for like, let's say, play, pause. I'm not asking for any swiping gestures here, but just for play, pause, next track, skip track, previous track. They could have done something, but they didn't. I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity, especially considering how bulky these are. They could have easily packed more, but I think Sony went the audio route. They decided that let's pack in more technology. Let's make it a larger uh, shell so that their extra base technology can be better performing. I think that's what they probably geared it towards. Okay, so pricing, uh, these are under 10,000 rupees. Uh, for that much money, is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal? Are you happy with that pricing? I think if you start comparing it to its competitors, whether it's like your Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, which is, which, bit, is, which is a little bit more, not yeah, by a lot, but, not, but, not by a lot, but yeah. pretty much the same. Like if you're considering these, you might as well be considering those. But I think the main thing to consider is that Samsung is probably not focusing completely on audio, while Sony definitely is. Now, while Samsung will give you a lower profile, it might give you a better look, it might give you a little bit of touch controls. This is gonna give you the best audio experience. And at the end of the day, if you're buying um, a true wireless product and you're investing more than anything more than 5,000 rupees in it, which is pretty expensive considering earbuds, that's actually very, very good that they focused on sound quality rather than gimmicks or rather than just out and out quirky functions, which I think is a good, good um, pro when considering this. Okay, so overall, 
really good package. Very, can't, very impressive. Can't say the same about Sony's naming choices, but... I don't think that's ever going to change. What are you going to do about it, right? So on that uh, note, it's time for us to say goodbye. We really hope you enjoyed uh, watching the show. Of course, if you have any questions or you want to give any feedback, feel free to hit us up in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, this was our first episode and many more to come. Thank you so much for watching.